Welcome back. In this module, we're going to be talking about chemical reactions. All right, so chemical reactions. We learned in previous modules that chemical bonds occur when there's an interaction between electrons of two or more atoms, and molecules are groups of two or more atoms connected by chemical bonds. Ionic bonds occur when one or more electrons is transferred from one to the other. It occurs due to an attraction of positive and negative ions. The atom that adds electrons has a negative charge overall, and the atom that loses electrons has a positive charge overall. Covalent bonds share atoms between them. These atoms have a similar or identical electronegativity. When electrons are shared equally, the bond is formed is nonpolar covalent. When electrons are shared unequally, the bond formed is polar covalent. Metals and nonmetals have large differences in electronegativity. Metals usually become positively charged cations, where nonmetals tend to become negatively charged anions. Ionic bonds are formed between a cation and an anion. A chemical reaction occurs when chemical bonds are broken down and new bonds form. The law of conservation of mass states that matter is never created or destroyed. Catalysts accelerate chemical reactions and inhibitors decrease reaction rates. And this is all kind of a review, but over here we have those three types of chemical bonds. So let's talk about chemical equations. Actually, it's a spot right there. Okay. So the reactants on the left side before the arrow. So over on, you'll see this arrow. This is the way typically a chemical reaction will be written. It will look like this. So the reactants are going to be on the left-hand side and the products are going to be on the right-hand side of the arrow. The arrow indicates the reaction or change. So this, this is the word equation and this would be the way the chemical equation would be written. The coefficients are the number before the element and indicates the ratio of reactants to the products in terms of moles. So we actually, oh, yep, right here. So this is the coefficient, which is the number before and indicates the ratio of reactions. So we have two oxygen O2 molecules. In parentheses, G stands for gas, L stands for liquid, S stands for solid, and AQ stands for aqueous solution, which is a substance dissolved in water. So we actually don't see that in the example. So charges are shown in superscript for individual ions. And so we can see um, that here we have well, actually, we don't have a superscript. We have a subscript. So superscript, if it was positive or negatively charged, there would be a little positive or negative up at the top here of any of these, but we don't have that in our example. Polyatomic ions are separated by parentheses, so the ion will not be confused with the number of ions. And an unbalanced equation is one that does not follow the law of conservation of mass, which states that matter can only be changed, not created. So if you look down here, this is an unequal, unbalanced equation because on this side we have two hydrogen and two oxygen, but we have two hydrogen but one oxygen, so it's not balanced. If an equation is unbalanced, the number of atoms indicated by the preceding coefficients on each side of the arrow will not be equal, so that's what's going on here. So you want to start by writing formulas for each species in the reaction, count the atoms on each side, and determine if the number is equal. Coefficients will be whole numbers. Fractional amounts such as half a molecule are not possible. So we can see that up here, you may get this word problem. Methane plus oxygen equals carbon dioxide plus water. And you can then write it out in this way, where you can see methane, this is the equation for that, oxygen, that's this, and then carbon dioxide in water. So if you just knew it was oxygen, but you didn't know how many molecules, you could look on this side to see, okay, I have two oxygens here, 
and I have one oxygen with the water, but on this side I have a compound of the two oxygen, so I need to make it equal. So you can't have three oxygen on this side because you have a molecule that has two, which would look like this, as you can see. It's probably a better way to look at it. So what you need to do is you need to add, make this two oxygen on this side and then two water on this side so that now you have four oxygen. You have the two oxygen here and then you have the two oxygen here, which would equal four and now it's balanced. So now you just balanced an equation. The law of conservation of mass states that in a chemical reaction, matter is neither created nor destroyed. There will always be the same number of mass of materials before and after a reaction. This allows for predicting how molecules will combine by balancing equations in which the number of each type of atom is the same on either side. So if you look at this equation, you can see that this compound has 16 carbon, 36 hydrogen, and this has 50 oxygen because you have an O2 and you have 25 of them. So you have to multiply those, so that's 50. And then same with this, you have two of these compounds. So you're gonna have two times eight is 16 carbon, and two times 18 is 36 hydrogen. So now on this side, you know you have CO2 and you have water, but it needs to equal what's on this side. So you know you need 16 carbon, so you add 16 of these to have 16 carbon, and that's also gonna give you 32 oxygen. So then you need to figure out, you need another 18 oxygen. So if you make this 18, you'll get the 18 oxygen and the 36 hydrogen, and now these are both equal. So the point of this is you might get something that says you have this molecule plus oxygen, but it doesn't tell you how many, which equals carbon dioxide and water. And you don't know how many. So that is why we balance the equations is because by looking at how many you have on each side, you can kind of figure out the amount of each compound that you would get after the reaction. So let's talk about reactions. Chemical reactions normally occur when electrons are transferred from one atom or molecule to another. Reactions and reactivity depend on the octet rule, which describes the tendency of atoms to gain or lose electrons until their outer energy levels contain eight. Reactions depend on the presence of a reactant, which is a substance that undergoes the change, reagent, which is a partner in the reaction, less transformed than the reactant, such as a catalyst, and products are the final result of the reaction. Environmental factors are also important components in reactions, so temperature, pressure, concentration, whether the reaction occurs in a solution, the type of solution, and the presence or absence of a catalyst. Chemical reactions are usually written in the following format, reactants to products. So again, these are our reactants, these are our coefficients, the, num the big numbers before, and then these are our products. All right, so let's talk about catalysts. So these are enzymes or catalysts are substances that speed up the rate of a chemical reaction, but they're not used in the course of the reaction. After the reaction is complete, the enzyme remains in the same form. An enzyme lowers the amount of energy needed for a chemical reaction and helps accelerate the reaction. Substances that help change the rate of reaction without changing their form, they can increase the rate by decreasing the number of steps it takes to form products. The mass of the catalyst should be the same at the beginning and the end of the reaction. And the activation energy is the minimum amount required to get a reaction started. An activation energy causes particles to collide with sufficient energy to start the reaction. A catalyst enables more particles to react, which lowers the activation energy. And the substance that the enzyme acts upon is called the substrate. Enzymes help specific substrates. Example, enzyme amylase breaks down the substrate amylose, which is starch. So we can see over here in this graph, we have a reactant and we have a product. So the energy required to break down this reactant or transfer this reactant into these products is 
on this pathway is the pathway without the enzyme, without the catalyst. And you can see it needs much more energy than the one with the catalyst. So it is just helping to speed up the rate of chemical reactions. So then we have chemical reactions. So there are five types of chemical reactions which correspond to this chart over here. So the first is a synthesis reaction. This is two or more elements or compounds come together to form a single compound. So an example of this is A plus B has a reaction to become AB. So carbon plus oxygen goes to CO2. Then we have decomposition reaction, which is a single compound decomposes into two or more elements of a compound. So decomposition AB goes to A plus B. We have a single replacement reaction where one element switches places and replaces another element. So AB plus C goes to AC plus B. We have a double replacement reaction where two elements switch places and replace one another. So AB plus CD equals AD plus CB. And then we have a combustion reaction. It's an organic compound combines with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide plus water. Combustion reactions are usually exothermic, giving off heat. So AB plus D goes to AD plus BD. And that is the end of this module, so make sure to take the quiz, and I will see you in the next module. You guys are almost done. We only have a few left. I'll see you there. Bye.